The Retro Pocket 3 Plus was one of our favourite handhelds of last year. It played some PlayStation 2 games quite well, but excelled when it came to upscaled PSP. So Blackview got in touch with us and sent us an Android tablet for review. Checking the specs, it draws many similarities to the Retro products. Will it rock your socks off? Let's find out. Welcome to Team Pandori. Subscribe. I am John. We actually lost the video for the unboxing, so you just gotta remember what it looked like. I think it was a black box, and inside... No, no, that's not right. Definitely had a tablet inside. And it was in a case. Definitely came with a screen protector. And there was one of these Android pens that felt really good, I remember that. We had a USB-C charging cable, and a European power adapter. It's a bit weird because we need a US plug, and it came with no additional converters. Getting up close to the tablet now, it actually looks quite nice. But this is the case. Can easily flip it open. And agree to some of the tablet's features. Also tells us to charge it before we turn it on. We've got an AI camera with 13 magic points. We'll have a look at that later, but first, let's take off this case. Along the top and bottom edges of this tablet, we have a total of four speakers. They're well positioned as backfiring speakers are the worst. This pinhole here gives us access to the SIM card or micro SD slots. There we go. So in here we can either put two SIMs, or one SIM and a micro SD. Along the edge we have a USB-C port, volume up and down, and the shutter button. And before turning on, let's give it a quick charge. Let's have a look at the specs. We have an 11 inch IPS screen at 2K. The Unisoc T616 is an 8 core CPU that runs up to 2 GHz. We have Sony and Samsung camera sensors, a large battery, and have a nice set of Wi-Fi standards. Let's turn it on. So yeah, it's running Android 12. And while removing this sheet, we can actually see another very thin screen protector. We're greeted with a few setup screens. We can choose our language, set up Wi-Fi, and even sync up and restore our apps from another Android device. And it's pretty much as you'd expect, a very clean version of Android. We have the regular Google apps. And with Google Play, we can have what we want. There's absolutely no bloat at all. Except this toy crusher thing. Let's get rid of this. Deleted! So this is using the DocoS version of Android 12. Information online suggests it's a bloat-free version that is ideal for an office space. Add a keyboard, and you can do all your Excel sheets, things like that. The tablet itself has quite a high resolution. We have plenty of internal storage space to add more apps. We can use the case itself as a stand, and let's see how this tablet is to use. When it comes to web browsing, this tablet is nice and snappy. So if you want to do shopping, just have a look through Amazon and find something nice. Ooh, robots. Exterminate. So we can stream videos to this quite nicely. Here's YouTube. But on this 4K video, we can only get up to 720p. It's probably because it's HDR. If we check one of the 4K videos from Team Pandori, it goes all the way up to 1080p. And on this display, it looks rather nice. You can also use this tablet for Netflix. No problems here. Comparing the display to a Retro Pocket 3 Plus and a Fire HD 8, the Tab 16 at full brightness is a little darker, but can display in much more detail. And here it is on the lowest brightness, very similar to the Retro Pocket 3 Plus. Let's move on to the camera. The application that's built in is very basic. It defaults to the highest 16.9 resolution, so if a subject is not still, you'll get a very poor photo. And as we have a limited amount of options available, there's not much we can do about it. With little to no control over crucial camera options like focus or ISO values, the addition of Samsung and Sony parts are pretty much wasted. Using a third-party camera app, we have more control, but nowhere near as much as we'd like. Here are a couple snaps. Here's a TV and a PlayStation 4 Pro. So look outside. Before we check out some games, here are the benchmarks. We know they're not that interesting, but we added them just to be thorough. First up, the Android apps. Talk a Kitchen 2.
Pocket Arcade Story DX. South Park, Phone Destroyer. And one of our favourites, Psycho Boy. Temple Run 2. Asphalt 9. Dave the Tentacle on ScumVM. Using the Bluetooth options, we can easily connect our 8-bit Doe controller so we can play things like Minecraft. There is a little bit of slowdown here and there, but that's probably due to the high resolution of the screen. Moving on to emulation now, here's Redream at one times resolution. We could raise that, but there'll be dips in the frame rate. And dead, we're alive too. This one's quite difficult to emulate, but it's running at full speed. And in RetroArch, many of the old school consoles are running great. Here's Sonic 2 on the Mega Drive. And Lotus 2 on the Commodore Amiga. Even Jim Power runs at full speed. And now onto the PSP. Most games run at full speed on 2 or 3 times resolution, but there are the occasional dips. The GPU in this tablet is slower than the one in the Retro Pocket 3 Plus, so we can't push it anywhere near as much. Here's God of War Goes to Sparta. It's running a bit slow, but if you add frame skip, it becomes playable. If you want a more handheld solution, we could use the iBigger 9083S. It connects via Bluetooth, and if we use a front end like Daiji Shiro, we essentially have a very large emulation handheld. So we can play Dreamcast, PSP, and arcade games on the go. And as this has pretty good Wi-Fi, we can stream games to it. So this is Steam Link, we can play any game from our main PC to anywhere in the house. So we can play Tekken 7 with this terrible D-pad, or Dirt Rally without an analog trigger. This iPega is not that great. It's about time for the pros and the cons. The Tab 16 has a well-detailed 2K display. The 8-core CPU keeps it very responsive, and it's helped with the version of Android with near zero bloat. As for the cons, it's let down by a very poor camera. We'd like it to have a slightly faster GPU, and more I.O. ports would certainly have been welcomed. To round things off, this tablet is pretty nice. It's definitely a worthy upgrade from the Fire HD8, and will be used to watch Netflix on the toilet. As we finish up with a game of Alter Beast, here's a big thank you to all of those on our Patreon. Here at Team Pandori, we make video reviews like this one, video guides and tutorials, as well as fix them cheap arcade boxes, and the F Avenger Mini. If you'd like to help us out, please consider joining, or a simple like and subscribe can go a long way. This has been Amy Chicken of Team Pandori, and I'll catch you on the next one. I've just found the box. Flip the neck. If you enjoyed this video, please smash that like, subscribe, and bell. Why not try one of these fine videos above?